give an advice on the just life in Korea. So let's give him a warm applause. How to survive posting Iran in Balpyohagis in Iran? Everyone speaks Korean, right? <laughs> no? no? Okay, then I guess I should speak English or we better speak Deutsch. Wer spricht Deutsch? Deutsch. Deutsch. Uh, Espanol, Espanol. No, Espanol. Okay, then what about Hindi? Who likes me to speak Hindi? Okay, maybe in my next life, but in this life, I will speak English with a German accent. Okay. Uh, I'm highly truly, I'm highly delighted about giving my talk, how to survive post-tech, a gentle introduction to post-tech, to you today, right now, right here. Uh, my name is Vanesco. I am a graduate student in the Department of Computer Science and maybe you wonder why a talk with such a title, How to Survive post -tech. I'm very sorry for spoiling your good mood, but I have to tell you some unpleasant news. post has a dark, well-kept secret, some evil fact about which you won't find any information on the university website. For, for what I'm telling you now, you have to be really, really strong. Okay? I hope you can handle this. And posting every day is like Monday. <laughs> you heard it right. I really wonder what made you come here. Because you like Mondays? Okay, okay. You didn't know about this, right? So. I also have some good news for you. It's not too late to leave. <laughs> Seriously, no one is leaving? Too bad, I thought I don't have to do the talk. Okay then, let's go. Uh, why did I come here? Don't think I'm a crazy Monday lover. That's really not the case. Actually, I very rarely make love on Mondays. I'm very sorry about this, ladies, but at least one day per week I have to rest. I'm rather this kind of person. Hell yeah, it's Friday. Okay, this was before I came to post it. Now it's rather like it's Friday, so what? No difference to Monday anyway. Yeah, post -tech has changed me, but don't lose hope. I will tell you some secrets how you can master life here in Korea and at post -tech. Okay. As you can see, I possess some special ninja skills. That's exactly what you need to survive post tech To survive post tech you have to be quick. You have to be able to walk silently, to hide quickly. But most important, you have to be able to do the spider jump. That's what I'm doing here. Don't worry, I will tell you how to do this. But first, some more theory. Yeah, life at post tech Ladies and gentlemen, it's party time. You're now at post tech. Okay, stop. <laughs> Back to the dark reality. You remember, at post tech, every day is like Monday. This means no weekends. Parties, grants, social activities. Are you kidding me? Vacations, fun. Wake up. You're now at post tech. From now on, just study. <laughs> Hey, are you laughing? Very soon you will remember my words and you will regret for not having followed my advice once more. Better be now. <laughs> I don't want to scare anyone, but actually I made some really scary experiences here. For example, last year there were some earthquakes. See, this is my favorite place in Pohang, Yonghilde, and the earthquake damaged it. They repaired it already, but the first time in my life I experienced that earthquake. I will tell you exactly how it happened. I was in the bathroom, to be more precise, I was using the toilet. 
I don't want to go into more detail here, but while I'm sitting there, for suddenly for a couple of seconds, everything is shaking, and for a short moment, I was super proud of myself because I thought this was me. But <laughs> soon I admitted that's impossible. <laughs> then we had Thai food. You see this place? It's next to our campus, Yucha Market. And everything was flooded. You see the car, it's completely in water. And usually I can come here by bike every day. But on that day I took the bus. I don't care about this little bit of rain, but the wind was just so strong and it was not my leg day. I don't let anyone mess up my training schedule, not even a typhoon. However, earthquakes and typhoons are actually not that bad. There's one thing which is much worse. So my worst experience in Korea is cold noodles. <laughs> hey, this is no joke. Noodles, which are cooked in boiling water, get cooled down and served with ice, real ice, which is frozen water, like ice that you would usually put in a drink, like a cocktail. I think I'm a very tolerant person, but how can you serve a pasta dish with crushed ice? If I was Italian, I'd probably get a heart attack. <laughs> okay, sorry for being so negative all the time. I should be more encouraging, right, and tell you I don't worry, studying and posting is a piece of cake. Okay, let me tell you something good about posting. I'm thinking. <laughs> I think I have something. You won't get weight here because you won't like the food. And the gym is pretty cool, but you might have more time to use it. As you might start to understand, life at post can be very challenging, but no worries, I will give you some advice how you can master life in Korea and how you can survive post -tech. My first advice, be respectful. Uh, one example, once in a while I observe other foreigners, of course not me, I do everything perfectly right, but other foreigners, they don't know any Korean, not a single word, and that's okay in most cases. But maybe sometimes it can appear a little bit arrogant if you go to a traditional restaurant, very confident, order in English, maybe the elderly lady might not understand a single word what you're talking. She might even feel a bit uncom un uncomfort uncomfortable <laughs> in this situation because she's somehow expected to speak Korean. But hey, she's Korean, she lives in Korea, she speaks Korean. For me, this makes sense. So, my humble advice, learn some basic Korean. The earlier you start, the more you can benefit from it. Um, next one. No. Actually, Korean is very easy. You only have to learn three politeness levels. Not six, not five, not even four. Just three politeness levels. If you greet someone, the most formal expression is just to say Annyeong, everyone, Annyeong, very easy, but don't do it to your parents or your lecturer, you can do it maybe to your classmates, that's okay. In most cases, you would say Annyeong Haseo, that's okay if you go to a restaurant or somewhere, and then that is the most formal expression. For example, if you greet me, you should say Annyeonghashinika and bow very low. Okay? I hope you got this. <laughs> Next advice. Develop tolerance for things which might be strange to you. Coming from Germany, I'm used to a rather snobby society. For example, if you want to go to a uh, nightclub, Maybe the security staff at the door won't let you in because they don't like your outfit or your face or whatever. I think Korea is a little bit more easygoing and maybe you've seen these creatures. I don't know if they're animals or... Some people say they're very cute. I'm not among these, but anyway. And yeah, when I came to post at at my first time, I walked over the campus and then I see people wearing like prints of these
creatures or having it's a it's a phone case by the way or they have such a kind of phone case and then maybe they wear uh, a soft toy like a Pokemon and I get very irritated and the, I, I think maybe I'm on the wrong place because I saw this a university and not a kindergarten uh, okay and uh, meanwhile I think I become more relaxed about this issue and I think it's actually uh, how a uh, great society should be open-minded, peaceful, and tolerant. So, yeah, just dress however you like. Okay, next advice, be grateful for what you receive. This university is a very great university, in my opinion, world-class university. We have very good professors, we have great facilities, and you can take advantage of this to improve your knowledge, your network. And also, I think post, uh, Pohang and Korea are great places to live. It's very safe. You get free water at many places, what I really appreciate. So, yeah, regarding the food, people often complain. And I admit, initially, I was very disgusted. I, maybe you know kimchi? I could not recognize it's cabbage. I saw this uh, kind of meat product or something, and it took me a while to get used to it. But meanwhile, I love the Korean food. This is this is my uh, lunch usually every day. I took a picture of it, and this is a uh, bibimbap. It's different vegetables in a bowl with rice, and probably that's the reason that I'm currently so fit and sexy. Look. This was me back home in Germany. I was drinking a lot of beer, eating mostly sausages and pretzels. But now, since I'm eating Korean food every day, look at me now. <laughs> One moment. This was just to prove the results are real. I didn't use Photoshop or anything. I wouldn't even know how to do this. <laughs> so maybe I show more skills at a Christmas party. Okay, now let me give you some study advice. I hope you made already friends with this staircase because you will go up and down a lot. And you might stand at the bottom, look at this long walk, and you might get really depressed thinking about this long, cumbersome walk. So what I suggest, forget about this whole walk. If the staircase would be just one single stair, you wouldn't mind. You just do the step, and you don't care. So forget about the whole staircase, do one step. Do another one, another one. It's very easy, and you don't feel the whole effort, like the whole mental burden is, um, doesn't exist if you just focus on the single steps. And if you study, like at the beginning of a term, sometimes I get really stressed, I get a big task, and oh, how should I do this? But if I just focus on the next step, for example, understand the question, this is my first goal, and then once I really understand the question, I'm like, yeah, my first success. So what's the next step and keep going like this and finally you're done and you have a great result. So my second advice, recharge your batteries. What I mean by this is live in a way that you can perform well, do like regular exercise, eat well, sleep enough and just take care of yourself. But even if you if you Fit, you might get bored after some time. Like last year before the final exams, a couple of weeks before, I was I had to write some reports, and every day I do research, I write, I, I read, I write, and I get very bored after some time. Every day the same routine. So I felt some desire to cycle. I just want to cycle far away. So I said, okay, now this day I will just cycle. And then I cycled to this beach, it's Chilpo Beach. So here at Pohang, around the coast, we have many nice beaches. And so I cycled there, 
And once I reached there, I decided I want to go further. And there are many hills, so after some time I lectured and I said, okay, one more hill, one more hill. And then I decided it's time to go back because I, I want to make it back uh, before it's getting dark. So now I have to go back over all the hills. I lectured already after some time, also my butt hurts. And then I checked the distance, still 20 kilometers. Okay, I can do this, keep cycling, keep cycling. And it feels like ages. I check the distance again, still 15 kilometers. And then I think about studying, I think sitting somewhere, doing research, that would be heaven right now. So you can try this out if you need some motivation. Okay, quick summary. Uh, I mean, how to master life in South Korea, I think this is uh, very generic, but anyway, respect, tolerance, appreciation. For example, if I go to a Korean restaurant I, and I start speaking Korean, people already get very impressed. And then I start eating kimchi. The, oh, the white guy is eating kimchi. Is, this, is it not too spicy for him? But I survive. And then, if I tell them I'm from Germany, they go crazy. So just tell the people you're from Germany and <laughs> they will love you. Uh, okay then, how to survive post tank break your task down, focus on single steps, take care of yourself, recharge your batteries, sleep at least 6 hours per night, do at least 20 minutes exercise per day, eat kimchi every day, but most important, do the spider jump, don't ask me why. Okay, this is my final slide. I just want to share something with you that I find very inspiring. See, this guy is a b-boy dancer like me, but I have legs and he doesn't. And this is what he says. The real disability is in the mind, not in the body. So for me, this means like, if we are mentally strong, we can overcome anything. Nothing can knock us down. So this is just something I want to share with you. And if you like my talk, or if you're interested in psychology related topics, I have a blog, and this is my interest, like uh, how to study successful and these kind of things. So check it out. One more thing, last year I tried